Right, so this is a tale of Labour Party donors and that old epithet of what are they buying when handing over their money, especially when it comes to the handing over of millions of pounds. Starmer's Labour have made much of Tory donations, the £10 million handed over by their super donor, Frank Hester, and the comments he made about Diane Abbott. But what about their own super donor of £5 million, roughly speaking, donated by Autoglass boss Gary Lubner, himself with a very chequered past rooted in apartheid South Africa, and now his son has just been elected chair of Young Labour. Coincidence, or is this another one of those anonavoter moments? Right, so let's start with the donor in question here first. We know Labour are sending out begging emails for donations right now, pleading poverty, but why should they even need that? Why should they need more when they have donors like Gary Lubner to fund them now? The chap in question is vehicle glass repair and replacement magnate Gary Lubner, CEO of the global umbrella company for such auto repair work, Belron, itself an arm of a much bigger company called PG Group, who own auto glass here in the UK. And Belron, having been founded in South Africa in the late 1800s, played a huge role in the apartheid years in South Africa through the 60s, 70s and 80s. Lubner himself joined the police force in South Africa during that time, acting on behalf of what was a white supremacist regime running the country, presumably meeting out the brutality that regime became known for. So much so that sanctions and embargoes ended up being applied to that country, as you may well remember. I can remember just about. I was a child at the time. The sanctions that Belron itself was instrumental in busting throughout the apartheid years there, though, a company where by the 1980s, when I was said child, Lubner was working as an accountant for them. An example of this is the acquisition of order glass by the company in 1983. Thatcher having no qualms, of course, about them purchasing a British company. A police officer turned accountant, though. A bit strange, I thought, but not necessarily when, for one, and most importantly, we're talking South Africa and he was white. And for two, his father and uncle were bosses at the company, as had been his grandfather before then. Wealth followed, of course. He became a personal donor in that time to the ruling National Party in South Africa, funding the apartheid movement in effect there. Of course, that all came to an end, and rightly so. But he's gone on to funding United Jewish Israel Appeal, a lobby group with close ties to the Israeli state. The Israeli state itself having been long-standing recipients of donations from the Lubners. So all of this has been denied by spokespeople of the Lubners, of course. However, it is a bit of an unfortunate coincidence that news has now dropped that Gary Lubner is funding Keir Starmer's labour to the tune of, source material puts it at $6 million, dollars four and a half to five million pounds uh, going into the next general election because Lubner wants Starmer to be in power for a very long time. Lubner has already given more than a million pounds to Labour now. So we have a guy here in Gary Lubner who has funded two apartheid regimes, South Africa and Israel, it would seem, now funding a party led by a man who is a self-declared Zionist without qualification that is seemingly as pro-Israel as you get in Keir Starmer. But the fact of the matter also is that Starmer needs the cash now, and those with vested interests in Israel need their man in place. Starmer has hemorrhaged financial support through lost donations, lost memberships, and wasting party funds, so others are having to stump up the cash now if they want him in place. I will reiterate, Lubner denies being pro-apartheid at all. He claims to have been bringing it down from the inside, but his company throughout the apartheid years were not, and that same company over the last... 20 odd years of him being their CEO, uh, although he stepped down last year, has continued to fund Israel, which is another apartheid regime. That just makes his denials appear, well, weak if anything. But as somebody living through and meeting out justice, if you can call that, during this time of South African apartheid, for someone claiming to have been secretly working to bring it down, you expect this guy to know apartheid as well as anyone can when they see it, yet still they choose to fund Israel. And that couldn't be clearer when you look at the next generation as Gary Lubner's son Jack is a campaigner against BDS. He interned for the dreadful former Labour MP Ruth Smith and he has now been elected chair of Young Labour. And if the pro-Israel colours of this family weren't nailed on enough, Young Lubner's win has been hailed in an article in Jewish News penned by Starmer Stan Lee Harpin. Jack Lubner pictured in the middle there in this picture is also the former president of Cambridge University's Jewish Society where he was studying history and according to his LinkedIn page did his dissertation on that 
on the role of alternative media in creating cultures of denial over anti-Semitism in the Labour Party from 2015 to 2019. So the Corbyn years only then, as if anti-Semitism magically only appeared at that moment and disappeared as soon as Starmer took over, presumably. He has been the southern organiser for the right-wing Jewish Labour movement, whose chair Mike Katz recently tried to make the attacks on Tory MP Alan Duncan, naming names regarding Israel loyalties in his own party, all about Jeremy Corbyn, and was on the Labour to win slate for the Young Labour cha chairmanship. Uh, back to Young Lubner now. One of Labour to Win's co-directors, being NEC member and director of the We Believe in Israel lobby firm, Luke Akerst, Mr. Israel himself. So lots and lots of pro-Israel connections here, not to mention he's the son of one of Labour's biggest donors. And amidst many allegations of vote rigging, many concerning the Labour vote, uh, Labour Party online voting system and on a voter, apparently convenient results like this, especially one relating to such a large pro-Israeli donor to the Labour Party, is causing eyebrows to be raised. Now, he put out a tweet to celebrate his win, featuring that very image from before, saying, If you'd have told me when I first got involved in Young Labour when I was 16 that I would be elected national chair, I wouldn't have believed it. Thank you to everyone who has supported me throughout this campaign. The work to rebuild Young Labour starts now. Well, I bet it does. In fact, on one other person in that photo replying to that tweet, the young woman in the bottom right there, she's called Izzy Waite, and if you were already wondering whether it's who you know and who you're connected with that might help you get ahead in Labour these days, this might be another example here too. Izzy Waite replied to Lubner's tweet there saying, Going to make me cry, insanely proud of you and beyond relieved that young Labour is in such safe hands. Now, Izzy Waite is a third year student at Sussex University at this moment in time and is now the youngest parliamentary candidate for Labour in the country set to take on Kemi Badnock in North West Essex. She's just 21, not even out of uni yet, and could be heading to Parliament already. Any particular reason why? Well, she's previously been a vice chair of campaigns in Keir Starmer's Holborn and St Pancras constituency and is currently doing that same role for the new seat of Hampstead and Highgate, being contested by Labour MP Tulip Sadiq. So a reward for a job well done by Keith then, perhaps? Given her gushing over young Lubner is clearly of the right faction. She's been a member of the Labour Party for just over two years. That's it. So I'd love to know how she came by that selection. Not only to be long-listed, short-listed, but actually win it. Another parachutee. Are we looking at that? More questions are being raised over the legitimacy of votes and selections amidst allegations of vote tampering elsewhere. And yet another instance of pro-Starmer candidates being imposed upon local constituency Labour parties, overlooking anyone locally that might have been preferred. Certainly, in other video content, I've covered plenty of instances of that. Labour needn't be shocked and appalled by people saying when they look at this situation, these votes in the current climate, that they don't believe the results. And that goes double when you consider that more than a month has now passed since Labour admitted to vote tampering having happened in Croydon East constituency, the very home of the Anona Voter online voting system. And we still don't know if anyone has been suspended or punished in any way in regards to that. And that's despite it all being the subject of a police investigation now as well. Not only that, but now two MPs who have been deselected are blaming an honour voter, blaming vote rigging for sending them packing. So these vote tampering allegations have gone nationwide. Is it any wonder people aren't buying wins for conveniently pro-Starmer candidates or those related to pro-Starmer donors in which case? Find out the detail of those MPs and their stories in this video recommendation here. I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.